Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers lawful orders, the Fifth Amendment, and officer conduct, and is brought to us by Ensuring Transparency's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On November 13, 2020, Trooper Jackson Little of the Arkansas State Police pulled over an individual who only identified himself as James for allegedly speeding. Very little information is available about this interaction, and I could not definitively confirm James's identity. However, for the sake of clarity, I will refer to James as Mr. Transparency in this episode. Howdy. Rolls down all the way, man. Why is that? Roll down all the way so I can talk to you better. We can talk, right? I mean, roll down all the way. I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. What law is that? Why are you starting this, man? Well, you're telling me to I roll just, my wind. We can talk, right? Yeah, roll it down more. But why? So I can talk to you better, man. I'm not going to talk to you through a crack like this. I'm not, we can talk. I'm not trying to be rude to you anything like I'm that. I'm really not trying to be rude to you either, but... So what's the deal? Why don't you want to roll it down all the way? Because I don't have you to. Want to? You I just, you just trying to be difficult I'm not trying to be difficult. Do you want my license registration? Yeah, if you don't care. Trooper Little orders Mr. Transparency to roll down his window all the way, but Mr. Transparency refuses. While Section 27-49-107 of the Arkansas Code states that, quote, no person shall willfully fail or refuse to comply with any lawful order or direction of any police officer, there is no guidance offered as to what constitutes a lawful order. The issue of whether an order to roll down a window is a lawful order that would be covered by the statute is complicated. Complicated. And while there is no readily available Arkansas case law analyzing the statute, other states have reviewed similar statutes and reached conflicting conclusions. For example, in the 1975 case of Coughlin v. State, the Alabama Court of Criminal Appeals reviewed an identical lawful order statute and determined that, quote, for an order of a police officer to be lawful pursuant to that section, such order must be directly related to the direction, control, and regulation of traffic, and that the law, quote, was not intended to, does not, and cannot give police officers unbridled power to arrest for refusal to obey any order they may choose to direct at a citizen. However, in the 2016 case of State v. Thigpen, the 8th District Court of Appeals of Ohio reviewed a similar lawful order statute and found that because there is nothing in the plain language of the statute limiting it solely to orders or signals of police officers actively engaging in traffic direction, control, or regulation, the duty to comply exists even if the police officer's order is not made in the context of enforcing any traffic law. I have covered this topic in further detail in previous episodes of ATA, but there is little clarity to be had on the issue without a direct ruling from a higher court. What's the reason for stopping me? If First off, okay, I'm Trooper Jackson Little with the Arkansas State Police, okay? I appreciate that. The reason I'm pulling you over is speeding. You know how fast you're going? I do. How fast are you going? I'm not going to answer that question. Okay, I got you going 87 and the 65, man. That, that's, that's a little quick. I got this dash cam here. Yeah. And it records my speed. Okay, how fast does it say you're going? I'm not going to answer that question, but okay. I know it wasn't that. This is okay. uh, registration insurance. You you going, I'm not going to answer that. Okay. I'm really not trying to be difficult with you, sir. So what's the deal then? Well, what deal? Like why are you being like why are you just being so defensive and argumentative? With what? Everything I'm saying. Um, um, well, I don't First believe. I'm not being cooperative. I roll on the window down. It's not a huge deal. I'd like to talk to you better. You know, you said I think that we're like talking this. fine though, aren't we? We were, but I just it's, not, don't, it's, not, it's not... Well, hold on. Hold on. Let's start over. We're not going to argue. I don't want to argue with you, but okay. let's start over. Okay. Can we do that? Yeah. My name's James. You have my nice ID to meet here. You, man. And uh, I just don't... The reason for the window, I'm not trying to be defensive or yeah, argumentative yeah. or anything. Yeah. I just don't like to have it all the way down. Why is that? I just don't. Why is that, man? I just don't. Okay, you know? okay. Everyone's different, I guess. Everyone is a little different, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You like it down, I don't, you know. It's, okay. Everything looks good here. So you don't think you were speeding? I don't uh, want to answer any questions with, regarding that. Why not? Trooper Little asks Mr. Transparency if he thought he was speeding, and Mr. Transparency replies that he does not want to answer any questions on that subject, invoking his Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. The Fifth Amendment provides that, quote, no person shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself. In the 1951 case of Hoffman v. United States, the U.S. Supreme Court determined that this privilege against testimonial compulsion, quote, not only extends to answers that would in themselves support a conviction, but likewise embraces those which would furnish a link in the chain 
of evidence needed to prosecute the claimant. The court also explained that individuals do not need to answer questions when they have, quote, reasonable cause to apprehend danger from a direct answer, and that to claim the privilege, quote, it need only be evident from the implications of the question in the setting in which it is asked that a responsive answer to the question or an explanation of why it cannot be answered might be dangerous because injurious disclosure could result. Building on the Hoffman decision, the Supreme Court held in the 2001 case of Ohio v. Reiner that the privilege against self-incrimination applied to the innocent as well as the guilty because, quote, truthful responses of an innocent witness, as well as those of a wrongdoer, may provide the government with incriminating evidence from the speaker's own mouth. And that, as the suspect of an investigation, it was reasonable for an individual to fear that answers to questions might incriminate them. In this situation, Mr. Transparency was clearly entitled to invoke his right to remain silent in response to the questions Trooper Little asked about his speed, as he could very reasonably fear that his answers could be used against him. It's just... It's not a huge deal, man. It's just, speed, just speeding. I get it, and, uh... I don't you know, think it's a huge deal to not... Something, uh, you know, if you don't think you're going that fast, something could be wrong with your car or something, man. You know, you never know that. It's a 2021. I'm not, rude, nothing like that, man. <laughs> I'm not trying to be rude either. I know you're being nice now, so I appreciate that. Well, I, I feel like I've been nice. Yeah, it's... it's The deal is, man, we go, you know, if, uh, we, th you give us signs by not being cooperative by the little things. We're not sometimes cooperating? It, just listen. Let me talk, okay? Sure, sure. Okay. Those little things can mean a lot sometimes, man. For all you know, you could be trying to hide something or anything like that. So those mm -hmm. are just little clues. I'm not saying you are not accusing Well, we're just anything. operating within the bounds of the law right now, aren't what we? Say? Are we just operating within the bounds of the law right now? We are. Then... But those are just little clues, man. I mean, it's it's, it's kind of weird when you don't want to really win it down the way. It's just a little weird, man. It's Talk a little that. weird that you're just demanding I do something. You said that you're not, you're not asking, you're telling me. And you don't have the legal grounds to tell me to roll my window all the way down. That's the only thing. That was a lie. A lie? Yeah. That's not a lie. Do I, I make, have I, to roll I, my listen, window down? I can make a bigger deal out of that. If, I'm not Hold going on. to, though. Do I, I have to roll my window down all the way? Is that you a law? I do what I ask, man. Is that a law? And if you think that's violating whatever, we can take it to court. If that's the, we if that's can the take case. that one to court. That yeah. is not a law that if I have I, to have I my window all the way down. Like that. But like I said, it's speeding, man. It's, it's not a huge deal. And I, I understand that. And that's why I feel like we got off on the wrong foot because you were telling me to do uh, something that I don't have to do. I can tell you to do whatever I want. If you think it's violation, you can whatever, tell me to do whatever you want. If if you think it's a violation of whatever thing you're talking about, we can take it. Well, I don't think you violated anything right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good deal. Good deal. No, I just I don't. I think we have a disagreement so, on yeah, what the so law says like, on the what, window. What, like, what's the deal, man? Honestly, like, what? Well, there's zero deal. Okay, so just what? Why you, you've you just... got me stopped. Yeah, yeah. You're accusing me of um, speeding. You say. Yeah. I've handed you my documents. I'm doing everything I'm legally required to do. Trooper Little continues to question Mr. Transparency about why he will not roll down the window all the way, and seems to interpret Mr. Transparency's reluctance to aid the investigation as some form of hostility. In many situations, the refusal to assist in an officer's investigation does not, on its own, give the officer reasonable suspicion of criminal activity. For example, in the 1983 case of Florida v. Royer, the U.S. Supreme Court held that when an officer approaches an individual, quote, the person approached need not answer any question put to him. Indeed, he may decline to listen to the questions at all and may go on his way. He may not be detained even momentarily without reasonable objective grounds for doing so, and his refusal to listen or answer does not, without more, furnish those grounds. However, an individual's refusal to answer questions can later be used against them in a criminal prosecution if they fail to expressly invoke their Fifth Amendment privilege. In the 2013 case of Salinas v. Texas, the Supreme Court held that a defendant who simply remained silent in response to questioning had not invoked his right to remain silent because, quote, the privilege generally is not self-executing, and a witness who desires its protection must claim it. A suspect who stands mute has not done enough to put police on notice that he is relying on his Fifth Amendment privilege. The court also noted that, quote, popular misconceptions notwithstanding, the Fifth Amendment guarantees that no one may be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself. It does not establish an unqualified right to remain silent. A witness's constitutional right to refuse to answer questions depends on his reasons for doing so, and courts need to know those reasons to evaluate the merits of a Fifth Amendment claim. Using this rationale, the court determined that, because an individual is the only person who can know why they are not answering a question, it is their burden burden to make a timely assertion of the privilege, and if they do not, their silence can be used as evidence of their guilt. Therefore, individuals who wish to invoke their right to remain silent must explicitly say that they wish to do so. Yeah, yeah. I don't understand why you think I have a deal. I just don't, why can't you just, like, what, what's, so, what's so hard about just 
What? Well, what's wrong with you said that so we can talk, but we're talking right now. So yeah, there's nothing what wrong other there. reason is I'm, there? I'm just curious, honestly, why you can't just roll it down all the way. I, like, I don't know. Why, why don't, why don't I'm you just talk? curious of why you're so stuck on it. It's just it just blows my mind. Like, why can't you just roll it down all the way, man? Like, what's it blows my mind that you can't let it go. I thought we moved past this. It's just a little funny to me, man. I'm just I'm behind the whole cop thing. I'm just kind of curious why why you won't do it. I just don't uh, think that I am legally obliged to do that. Yeah, I'm saying beyond that, why don't you just want to? Like, what's the big deal? You see, I, are you afraid or what? I like my window. Well, I think that, yeah, a man approaches my car with a gun and... Yeah, I'm not here to hurt you or anything like that. I do my fully job. believe that, you yeah, know, yeah. but I'm, yeah. I'm allowed to have my defenses up, right? Do you believe I'm going to hurt you? No, I don't. But you got your defenses up, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just a natural All the stuff thing. going on, I guess it's kind sure, of natural. Sure, yeah, stuff, yeah. Know? I, yeah. I have nothing against you as a person. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just. You gotta think, man. Not not every cop's a bad cop. So I'm not here to no, hurt you like no, that, man. And I'm fully on on the side of the police. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But I just I, I have. I appreciate that. Yeah, I have my 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 ways. I gotta do things. Yeah. I, I was just saying behind the whole cop thing. I was just kind of curious why you didn't want to roll, like behind the whole. <laughs> I'm the cop. You're the, you know, violator, or whatever. Behind, just kind of curious why you didn't want to roll it down. So. Yeah, I just I just like it where it is. Okay. okay. Yeah. Everyone's different. Sure. Anyway, man, just hang tight here, okay? Sure. Put your stuff back, man. Here's what we're doing, okay? All right. Your records look pretty dang good. I didn't see a speeding warning or ticket on there, okay? Okay. On you for the warning, okay? I really I you appreciate don't think you're going that fast, but radar said you were, but I'm not. I'm not writing you a ticket. That's what I was going to ask: is if you're on radar, because yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not lying to you. I wasn't yeah. going that fast. It's... How fast? How... I since we're beyond that, how fast was it? Was I, it, it I really go? can't answer that question. Well, I'm not um, writing you a ticket, man. It's a warning, so I'm just curious what it says. I understand, uh, gonna... but there's a formality that's got to take place there. Um, you, I just. What do you mean formality? Um, my right to remain silent on things. I'm uh, not, not going to walk back there and rewrite a ticket, man. I can promise you. That. I'm just curious. I, 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 I can you promise have, I won't answer have, the question. If you have my word, I'm not going to do that. I promise you. That's on, cam that's on my camera. Mr. Transparency continues to refuse to answer questions, even after Trooper Little issues him a warning and assures him that he will not write him a ticket. However, nothing would legally prevent Trooper Little from changing his mind and issuing a citation after the warning was given. So Mr. Transparency's privilege against self-incrimination remained intact after the warning was issued. Additionally, Mr. Transparency's dash cam footage could be obtained by the police and used against him in court if he were to confess to speeding, provided that they obtain a warrant for the digital data. In the 2014 case of Riley versus California, the U.S. Supreme Court determined that although the police could seize an individual's cell phone during a lawful arrest, they could not gain warrantless access to digital data without violating the Fourth Amendment. The court explained that, quote, in the absence of a warrant, a search is reasonable only if it falls within a specific exception to the warrant requirement, such as mitigating mitigating potential dangers when conducting an arrest, or preventing the destruction of evidence. In the 2019 case of People v. Blakesley, the New York City Court of Tompkins County applied the reasoning used in the Riley decision to a defendant's dashcam memory card. While the officers obtained a search warrant for the memory card itself, the warrant did not authorize a search of the digital data stored on the memory card. The court found that the warrantless search of the data violated the Fourth Amendment because, quote, once law enforcement found the memory card and seized it, no exigency existed, which prevented the procurement of an additional search warrant authorizing the search, preservation, and copying of the relevant digital content stored on the memory card. Due to the potential of self-incrimination and the dashcam video being used as evidence against him, Mr. Transparency was well within his rights to continue to refuse to answer questions. Well, yeah, man, what's your name again? My name's James. Okay, nice to meet you, man. I'm you Jackson. Too. Nice to meet you. You too. Um, what was your badge number? 587. 587. Is any of that going to be on the... the... Oh, let's see. It should be. Yeah. Name's right there, badge number's right there, okay? Perfect, man. But yeah, besides that, man, uh, just, uh, I know that you don't think you're speed. My radar said you were, but just be careful, okay? Absolutely, you too, for, your, for I sure. I appreciate it, man, and, uh, yeah. like I said, not every cop's bad, man. We're, no, we're I... We're just here to, we're here to keep you I safe, think the majority you know? of police are good, yeah. you know? Uh, the saying goes, a few bad apples spoil the bunch, yeah. and I think that's, that's a bad case yeah. of what's happening. After receiving his warning, Mr. Transparency requested Trooper Little's badge number and left the scene without further incident. Mr. Transparency shared the dash cam video on his YouTube channel on the same day as the incident, but it is unclear if he took any further action. Overall, Trooper Little gets a B-, minus because although he remained relatively calm and cordial throughout the interaction, he issued questionably lawful commands and consistently pressured Mr. Transparency to surrender his right to silence. While I do commend Trooper Little for engaging in a challenging and productive dialogue with Mr. Transparency, it is clear that a majority of the trooper's conversational intent was focused on convincing Mr. Transparency to admit to speeding in some way, shape, or form.
Although the trooper's demeanor was friendly and casual, nearly every question he asked Mr. Transparency had the potential to incriminate him, and his shameless persistence is a testament to the true tone of his questioning. Ultimately, the trooper did not violate any of Mr. Transparency's rights, but that was likely due to Mr. Transparency's refusal to allow him to do so, and the accountability offered by the dash cam. Trooper Little is not necessarily a bad officer, and many other members of law enforcement fail to understand that an invocation of civilian rights is not an inherent action act of defiance. Remaining silent is a powerful asset for citizens involved in police encounters, and members of law enforcement should respect and uphold that right as diligently as any other laws they choose to enforce. Mr. Transparency gets an A for challenging the logic and legitimacy of the trooper's statements, respectfully declining to answer any questions, and for engaging in a peaceful and productive dialogue with the trooper. Mr. Transparency did a fantastic job of declining to answer Trooper Little's questions without being rude or hostile, but his failure to verbally acknowledge the invocation of his right to silence could have been used as evidence against him in court. Outside of this small critique, Mr. Transparency demonstrated a thorough understanding of his rights and obligations during a traffic stop, and ensured that those rights were respected and the those obligations were met without issue. I commend Mr. Transparency for his ability to effectively communicate with the trooper without sacrificing his rights and without becoming vulgar or insulting. I highly recommend giving Ensuring Transparency channel your support and let them know that I sent you. You can find a link in the description below. Let us know if there's an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and be sure to check out my second channel for more police interaction content.